What's up? This is Jellyfish from Jellyfish Radio. Today we got Big Lou in the studio performing as a crew. Yeah, yeah, what's up? I've been looking for you, got no better way to put it. Saw you cross the flow, asking if I should wait or should it. Unfold it furthermore, my target will secure. Of that I will and show. Woo! You see me, I've been putting hours on my log, and all of a sudden I stood up, it got me feeling really tall. You're probably thinking, is this guy serious? He's really, really small. But behind the wall, the shots are surely cold. I lined it up and took my shot and then I scored I took a thought and then I turned it into mo After a lot of no's, I found another dough Now I live in abundance, you could call it galore It's Big Blue with the groove, you are welcome to the crew I am rocking here with you, show me what you could do Do it as a crew, do it as a crew Do it as a crew, do it just for you It's Big Blue with the groove, you are welcome to the crew I am rocking here with you, show me what you could do Do it as a crew, do it as a crew Do it as a crew, do it just for you from St. Martin to Canada, I'm here cause my stamina Was kneeling, I'm standing up, was reading, I'm acting up Proceeding, I'm planning up, fulfilling my character This will be spectacular Yo, it's good to finally meet you To be honest, it took me long to reach you Wanna roll with us, you've got to be you Now I wanna welcome you to the crew Hit me with a bounce, wanna either side Go, 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 go Let loose like you've been living the proud Whoa, whoa Whoa, 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 only get it started, buckle up for the ride Go, 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 here to build community and not to defraud No, 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 no It's Big Blue with the groove, you are welcome to the crew I am rocking here with you, show me what you could do Do it as a crew, do it as a crew Do it as a crew, do it just for you ha. It's Big Blue with the groove, you are welcome to the crew I am rocking here with you, show me what you could do Do it as a crew, do it as a crew Let's go, do it as a crew, do it just for you Whoa. Ooh, whoa. Ha, ha. It's Big Blue, do it as a crew, do it as a crew Do it as a crew, do it just for you Yo, my name is Big Blue And I want to welcome you to the crew Welcome to the crew, indeed. Yes, sir. Welcome to the crew. That was sick, man. Thank you, thank you. Tell me a little bit about that track. As a Crew. As a Crew is the first single that I've actually ever released. And the reason I chose that one particularly to be the first single is because I feel like it it captures uh, the different qualities that I embody as an individual and that I want to put out into the community. Um, I want to extend an invitation to all the people out there that kind of feel alone sometimes and I want them to know that they're not alone um I've gone through this kind of thing and and it's more fun doing things together so I want people to feel like they're part of something bigger part of the crew it's kind of like uh banding the underdogs together exactly yeah. exactly together we're stronger I love that man I love that and uh you have relatively recently gotten into the rap game um, and you call yourself the happy rapper. Yes, sir. Uh, do you want to give me a bit more insight into that? Happy rapper. Um, half of the people I tell this think it's a little cheesy. Half of the people I tell think it's pretty cool. The reason I chose happy rapper is because I was trying to find a way to summarize myself and my perspectives. Um, um, I'm not always happy. Obviously, you've got to feel the wide range of emotions there. You can't just only be one thing. I think that's unhealthy in itself. But you can choose happiness. And no matter what kind of situation you're going to go through, whether it's a, perceived as a good or a bad experience, it's an experience and it's something that we can learn from. And then if you choose to handle it with a grain of positivity, if you will, the rest of life will just seem to become a little bit easier. And that's what I want to share. <laughs> the mood was oh, there. Phone call. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I, I, that ringtone reminds me of the Titanic. Yeah, every yeah, time yeah. It comes up, so that's uh, <laughs> it's funny. I still haven't figured out how to get my phone to stop ringing on my computer, but yo, know, it's beyond me too. Yeah. It happened yesterday, actually, during one of my podcasts. Okay, <laughs> tech issues. You know, Mercury's retrograde or something. Like that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Lou, I am really happy to have you in the studio. Um, for my podcast, because I've listened to your podcast kind of since you since you started. Um, and it was cool, you know, it was the first time we met, it was cool to meet somebody else who does uh, interviews and stuff like that, because it's such a weird kind of vulnerable position to be on the receiving end of interviews and also being the interviewer. It's just like, oh, I got to be like a, a good host and stuff. So 
Um, I'm really happy to have you in judging my own. <laughs> <laughs> not judging, not judging. Just happy to be here. <laughs> awesome. So just give me your origin story. Ooh. Uh, music wise? So yeah, so the interview is generally not music. Um, I'm more interested in who Lou is. Uh, we'll touch on music. We'll bring points in, but okay. uh, yeah, just give me your origin story. You know how what elements of your life have brought you here? What's memorable to you? Born and raised in Saint Martin, tiny tiny island in the Caribbean. Um, fun fact about Saint Martin: that is the sixth smallest landmass in the world, divided by two countries. It's half Dutch, half French. I was born on the Dutch side, and when I was a couple of days before my 15th birthday, my parents decided, well, they didn't decide then, but a couple of days before my 15th birthday, I moved to Canada for boarding school. And I wasn't exactly eager to leave the Caribbean warmth uh, and trade that in for some, you know, sheets of snow that lasted approximately six months of the year. Mm -hmm. But that was a very significant change in my life because I was then exposed to a different reality. Um, St. Martin itself is exposed to a lot of different kinds of tourism and, 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 and a lot of different cultures. But the experience is infinitely different and not just good in good ways, not just bad ways. It's just different. And that difference is what kind of intrigued me to, to figure out what else I can achieve in this country. Um, that was 15 years ago. I ended up doing university. I finished boarding school. I did post-grad. I ended up working in the service industry for years and years. Um, I worked in the pharmaceutical industry. I wasn't a fan of any of that, but like all of that was in pursuit to get my permanent residency which I now have. And uh, once I was able to attain that after approximately 12 years, um, which was a little bit of a longer process, that doesn't, that's not the case for most people. Some people can get it in like six months. Some people get it in five years. Uh, it was just an anomaly. Anywho, um, once I was able to get that, I, I, I realized that I can actually try more than what I was doing previously, because what I was doing previously was trying to get permanent residency. And I had to, I had to work in my field of study, which was science at the time. I love science, but like, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. At least it didn't feel right. It didn't resonate with it you. It didn't resonate. Yeah, exactly. And once I had that permanent residency in my hand, I was like, shit, I can do anything I want now, really. Um, well, with respect to finances and, 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 and that. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't have any money to invest in different kinds of things. So I just invested my time and I started experimenting with different kinds of things as to what I wanted to do with my life. Because even, even at that point, I was what, 26, 27 years old. I was like, sweet, I don't got to do this and this and this anymore because I've got my PR. But what is it that I'm going to do? And um, from there, I kind of just panicked. I didn't want to get stuck in my nine to five. Um, and, and I did a lot of research. Research, how do I start doing something cool with my life. Literally th those kinds of things in Google and a lot of personal development kinds of things popped up and I just polluted my mind with it. Like I listened to everything. I watched YouTube. I took notes when I was watching YouTube. Um, in the middle of the work day, like I had finished my work early and then I would just start reading other things to like try and get myself out of that situation because like I was putting on weight. I felt that I, after work, I would drive home and I felt like I was angry at the people around me just for like driving poorly. And that's just a toxic way of living entirely. And it wasn't, if I wasn't able to become aware of that, um, I think I would have just kept on, kept on drowning and I wouldn't have discovered this whole world of creative expression. Um, the personal development led to motivational speaking, excuse me, led to motivational speaking, which then led to rap. And you said that you want to do a TED Talk. Is that still a goal? So I think I set that goal three years ago. I would love to still do a TED Talk. And when I set that goal, I said I would do it within two years. Um, that was before, before the, the dirty C word hit. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not using that as an excuse. As I was working towards that goal, I found that I would prepare my scripts and whatnot for the actual speeches. And... Um, when I would get up to actually rehearse the speeches, I would turn off the music. And I didn't realize that the two were connected, but like as I was writing my outlines, I was listening to music and I had that kind of feeding me subliminally or, or subconsciously. And so I thought, mm, what, if I, what if I wrote to the music and then rehearsed to the music? So like started writing songs, 
never once was that a, a, a an idea. And once I put those two together, the uh, the 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 drive to to do a TED talk kind of dissipated because I was more interested in the music. However, I'm still very interested in the power of communication, in 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 speeches, in sharing ideas, and that's what TED talks is. So I don't see my chances um, getting any worse as I continue to develop. My, my speech, my communication ability, whether it's through rap or motivational speaking. But yeah, that's definitely gonna happen. That's cool. Well, it's kind of the same thing. You are still your motivational rapper, you know, right. in a sense, you know, you are still, it's still stage performance and it's still conveying your message. Right. I want to ask about a turning point. Was there a turning point in your life that made you decide, I've got to wake up. I got to change. I I want to go in a direction. Yeah, yeah. There were a couple of events that uh, triggered that. But one one event that a lot of people find quite interesting is my experience with psilocybin. These are these are magic mushrooms <laughs> for people that aren't aware. However, I, I I don't say that with a laugh because there's something to joke about. I think this is like real transformative properties that are provided by mother nature this is healing healing medicine um and and you cannot abuse what potential they have inside of them um but the experience that i have in short the summary the like the the real actual moment was i was in the bathroom looking at myself in the mirror and my face just kind of seemed to from from my my boyish good looks you know it went to almost a 90, 95 year old man within what seemed to be seconds. And over time, I came to the realization, to me at least, that meant if I did nothing different with my life, I was just gonna grow old and die. And that enough was a revelation on top of the other things I had going on to make some critical changes. And so I will, <laughs> I'm super, super thankful for that experience. Um, once again, do not abuse it because it can really it can really go the other way for you if if you're not in the right mindset for it. But yeah, psilocybin really changed my life. Mm. And and so that made a big big impact on you when you decided that you need to change things up and start living for you. Otherwise, you will simply just grow old and die. Um, so you decided to change things up, take your life in a direction purposefully. Um, and so you've been doing that for a couple of years now. Tell me, why do you love your life now? Well, shoot. I have the ability to breathe. I can move. I have friends to talk to. Um, if I need help, I can ask someone for help. I can see things, color, I can touch, like just... The very, very basic elements of life are what make living enough for me. Um, once, once I think I was comfortable with that, I was, I was no longer chasing other kinds of material items. It became, it became simpler to to grasp that. I wasn't ever into overly like material items, but I was in the science world. I was like, it's black or white, it's right or wrong, and now I'm more open to. It just is, and we can just be, and that is our purpose. And so long as we're not actively hurting ourselves or other individuals, why, why, why not just love? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have, as you wake up, you go through your day, you go through your weeks, do you have a hierarchy of priorities that you get straight before anything else matters to you? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I find that as, as much as I talk about love, I feel like the world is so, so full of hate and like animosity and anguish and I'm just looking for some more acceptance. And what I find accepting are the thoughts that I have in my head before I get bombarded with all of these exterior, um, um, I don't know, I just shit outside, just the shit outside. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Propaganda, let's call it propaganda, you know? Uh -huh. um, um, and so in order for me to really live in that world for a little bit, the first thing that I do when I wake up is I'll, I'll get up, shower, I'll eat a, a 
I usually eat my banana. And then, boom, first thing, I sit at my desk and I write a full page in my journal. It takes about maybe like 30 minutes in the day. But I'm writing about what happened yesterday, all of the good things, all of the bad things, my thought process, um, so I can really appreciate what had happened and I can reflect on it and then make sure that I don't make the same mistakes, at least to the same severity <laughs> as I did the day before. Mm. And oftentimes, not gonna lie, regardless of like whether it was a good or bad experience, I'll find myself tearing up because you're really, you're really taking what had happened and analyzing it. And without doing that, a lot of emotions go unprocessed. And I think that prepares me for the day. Um, um, it prepares me for the day in a way where I know things might hit the fan. I almost kind of expect things to hit the fan. Mm -hmm. But it's almost a story that I'm narrating and I get to write about that experience the next day. Some days I don't wake uh, some days I wake up and I do not at all feel like writing in in the journal, but the idea of having an empty page in that journal is more daunting than spending 30 minutes every morning just writing about it. Mm, how many days do you have going now? <laughs> I have three uh, I started in 2018. So 2018, 2019, 2020. Three and a half years, good sir, every single day. Every single day. Well, okay, so when I started, when I started, I would write, I don't know what to write today, ha <laughs> ha, and then I would skip a day, and then I would write, today was so much fun, but like I have no context as to what the day was about, and then a couple of days would pass, and then I would write a paragraph, um, yeah, my mom made this for dinner, and then we went over here, and then I saw my friends, and we did this. And now, or so after about maybe a six month period of like on and off in uh, unstable writing or uh, journal entries, I made it, uh, I made it a deal to write it every single day. And it got to the point where I had a couple of knee surgeries and like I was out of commission for, <laughs> for some time, but there was a period after the second knee surgery that I had where I didn't write in my journal for 10 days in a row. But at that 10th day, I picked up my journal and I wrote each of those days based off of the memory um, that I had. So I was writing about each day specifically 10 days back. Uh, and that's from the activity of having actually written every day. My memories improved so much. Wow. So I don't have that 10-day block anymore, like in my journal. <laughs> okay, I gotcha. Okay, so, so then today, how many days ago can you remember? I mean, I guess you can remember every day, but it's like, do you have a vivid memory, a vivid memory of two weeks ago because you wrote it down, or would you have to consult your journal? Consulting the journal would be best, yeah. um, but I would be able to like recall. Hmm. Um, however, it's it's not like what did you do two days ago or like this, like what did you eat? Right. right. Uh, that's that's not what I'm gonna get. Like, I'll have to think about one detail and then that one detail will trigger another. And then that, it kind of like right. a, sequen a sequence happens. It's not like the whole picture. Yes, the mm -hmm. guitar was in this location and then this was on the TV. I'm not, I don't have that photo memory mm -hmm. kind of thing. Because generally what you're writing about is what happened and how you felt about it. Exactly. Okay. Are there any other tools that you use to stay positive? Ooh, yeah. Affirmations. I use affirmations. Affirmations, for those of you who do not know what those are, are just kind of like short phrases that you can repeat to yourself. Uh, for example, I am amongst the best rappers in the world. I am a very successful podcaster. Or, Louis, you are amongst the best rappers in the world. Because hearing it in the third person kind of triggers it differently. It's almost as if someone else is telling you this and giving you the permission. It's a subconscious trick that I like to use. Um, but... You could do it for whatever. Louis, you are a confident person. Louis, you can ask out your crush and they will say yes. Just convince yourself of whatever. And sometimes when I really, really want to take it even more seriously, I'll, I'll do this, but like I'll stare my soul. Like I'll, I'll just obviously look into your eyes. <laughs> but really take yourself seriously when you're doing this and mean it when you say it because these are the kinds of voices that you hear in the back of your head all the time. Um, affirmations. I also use vision boards. I've got, I try and make a vision board every six months. For those of you who don't know what that is, um, 
humans think visually. We see and picture in our heads, even with our eyes closed. And so a way to stimulate that subconsciously, subconsciously is the part of the brain that you're, you're not actively thinking. It's just happening in the background. Like, ooh, I'm getting hungry. Your subconscious told you that. You didn't like know, you didn't think about, right? Mm -hmm. I don't got to explain mm -hmm. that any further mm -hmm. before I make myself look like a fool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we, we're visual creatures. And so by having a vision board, I've got poster boards of different cutouts and clips of like magazine cuts or, or, or things that I've printed out of like Kevin Hart, Will Smith, people that I admire, places that I want to go, um, um, f uh, um, quotes about my family, like qualities I want to like embody as an individual. And I just have these stuck on my wall around my wall, around my room. Some people will have them in their bathrooms, like on their mirror so oh, that man. they see this every time that they go and brush their teeth. I got some roommates, so like I'm not invading their space like that, but <laughs> it's on my, <laughs> it's on my walls. And uh, just the visual reminder stimulates you so much so that it's just always at the back of your head and your decisions will actively be made to get you closer to what those are. It's preposterous. One example that this actually works for me is um, I started the whole writing thing. And as I was doing the writing thing, I then learned about the vision boards. And within a nine month period of making my, uh, my second vision board, I put up a house with a studio in it. And then literally I, I, I received a text from a person. He's like, yo, we just got an opening in this house. Do you want to move in? And there's a full recording studio, like full recording studio in there. Uh, Yes. She works. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. What do you do when you have a bad day? Ooh. That's do you a sit struggle. in it? Do you do you accept that you have a bad day and you just kind of go with it? Or do you are you doing things to change? You know, what's the balance between allowing bad and changing it? Yeah. Um bad is inevitable. Bad will happen. You cannot have good without bad. How I handle it, I try and, I try and, I like to, I'm an introverted person. So bad for me is almost, I need to separate myself from everything else going on because it feels like things are slowing down if I'm able to do that. Once things feel like they're slowing down, I can be like, hey, I'm allowed to have bad days. I have to remind myself. I'm actually talking to myself. Sometimes I even say it out loud. Hey, you're 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 allowed to like mess things up, and things will go out of out of control. For example, um, I was I was I'm getting ready to move countries, and I'm trying to ship a lot of my items that I've built up here back home. And the simple task of just packing some boxes and sending them to FedEx so that they can ship them to Miami. You would think this is a nice easy process. No, bro. It's taken me over two weeks. Whoa. Why? Why? I went to the FedEx shop five different times. Why? That's a bad day. That's an ongoing bad experience. But you've got other shit to do, right? So take it. Realize it's happening. Can you do something about it? If yes, do it. If no, move on. You know, shit's going to pop off sometimes. Make the most of what you can. If you need to sit down and, 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 and just be for a little bit, like I do, do that. If you need to jump and talk to your community and, and see how you can figure it out with your friends, do that. But it's okay to step back from things. Give yourself space. Give yourself time. Yeah. 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 Shifting lanes uh, a little bit. Mm -hmm. You started your podcast to learn about the industry. You said that uh, you want to be an artist, and so you're going to start this podcast to, to learn the ins and outs. What have you learned? Oh, damn. I have learned that no one is going to do the work for you. Like, if Very I'm going to summarize it, that's, that's it. Everyone is in it. Mostly for the love. Because at the beginning, you're not going to be making money. If you're, unless, unless, unless something happens that you're, you're very lucky, mm -hmm. but it's very unlikely that you're going to be making money at the beginning. So most people are in it because they like it. However, money is still an incentive, right? And if you're not able to get people that really like it to really also like you and have them help you out of the goodness of their heart, 
they're going to expect money. Mm. So unless you're going to have that money to give these people, if you're not able to convince them to like love you and build something with you, you're going to have to probably learn how to do it by yourself to the best of your ability, at least until some point where you can hire out. Um, no one's going to wake you up to start writing that verse. No one's going to tell you, hey, you should probably learn about sync licensing because that's another way to build revenue. No one's going to do that for you. So this that's essentially the biggest lesson I've heard from from over 60 guests that I've interviewed on, on Go Producer. You've, it's all up to you. It's yeah. your story, honestly. It's Your life is your own hero's yeah. journey. It's your it's your job to, to get up and walk it. Yeah, and uh, don't do it for anyone else. Oh, for sure. Shit. Don't uh, do it for anyone else. So how do you how do you manage relationships in the industry then? This is interesting. Um, after my experience with mushrooms, I went through a phase where I, I I almost started separating myself from my past relationships because I was so focused on myself. Oop. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was. I was so focused on myself and that was a good thing, but it was also a bad thing. It was a good thing because I was in a relationship with me and I was able to heal me and get me to the point where I feel like I'm a reinvigorated individual. And now I'm almost, you know, excited to be reintegrated with society. However, I feel like I should have spent a little bit more time maintaining and like extending energy towards people that have been and still are significant to me because like i mentioned earlier relationships you, you as as humans we can't do anything individually together we're stronger we need each other to like grow to to live to to even just survive imagine being secluded on an island by yourself forever we, we, we were just locked down for forever. And like, that was a shitty experience in itself. Imagine being isolated all alone. So because of that, I know it's a very extreme um, um, situation, but because of that, the relationships that you've got in your lives, you've got to spend a lot of energy on them because without them, we're absolutely nothing. But at the same time, be careful with the relationships that you have in your life because they can be very toxic. They're so influential on you and, 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 a couple of negative people around you will have an effect on you and likely make you negative. So be aware of the kinds of situations that you're in, the kind of people that you're in relationships with, and don't be afraid to step away from them. It's uncomfortable. Um, I've done it, but I'm infinitely happier for having done it. Mm. And, um, you know, in regards to relationships and even like you being an artist and just following your life, um, life puts you in very vulnerable states yep. all the time. So, so let me know, like, where does your courage come from? Courage to go through five seasons of a podcast, courage to start recording your own music and putting it out, claiming, you know, talking about self-help and, and doing this for you and doing it for other people. And, but where, where do you pull your courage from? Yeah. Yeah. Nice question. Um, I would say that my courage has come from, I guess, originally through observation of others before you were able to do anything, you can just like observe other people doing, you get an idea of how things can be done, not necessarily how they should be done or how you should be doing them. But, oh, that guy's on stage. He's able to like entertain this group of people. Why can't I? So ask that question. Why not me? Maybe, maybe you're probably going to come up with a whole list of things. I'm not funny. I'm not tall. I'm not this, that. But like my whole life was full of insecurity. I'm 5'5". Five, five. For a long time, I told people I was 5'7 because I didn't like the idea that I was shorter than five and a half feet. <laughs> this like, that was a reality to me. I'm also bald as shit. I started balding when I was 22, 21 years old, maybe even 20. I don't want to talk about it, but for that whole period of time, I was so insecure because I was balding. I was a short, bald guy. Like, come on. Um, and that, that, that just got to my head and, and I allowed it to get to my head. 
But once you start doing these little kinds of activities and you try experimenting and you ask, why am I insecure? And you understand the reasons, you can, you can test them. And then I started testing my personal, or I, I work towards my personal development. I joined different speech groups so that I can like actively get in front of people and pretty much embarrass myself as I did my first couple of speeches mm-hmm. because I didn't really know what I was doing. But it's that that like builds your confidence. It doesn't happen over a day. Man, I went, I was part of this group called Toastmasters for three years. And one of the speeches, one, this is, I think, the third speech I ever did. I came off the boat. I was like, yeah, I got my first speech. I felt good after my first speech. And then one of the ladies, she she became my mentor. She's like, hey, we're doing a um, an event at another club and we need a test speaker. Can you do a speech for us? I was like, yeah, sure. She's like, great. Don't bring your notes. What? Scary. Yeah. So I did that in front of them. Maybe the first 30 seconds were good. The next 45 seconds, <laughs> I stood there just, uh, e, oh, in just silence. And this is all on footage. I'm not exaggerating. So it's those kinds of experiences that allow you to realize, ah, even if I royally screw up and I look like a fool, it's not the end of the world. Shit's going to go on. I'm going to go to bed tonight. I can try again tomorrow. Kind of like trial by fire. Just do it. You 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 rip the Band-Aid off or you just get over it. It's Well, I mean, it reminds me of um, that adage, like, from ashes we will rise. You yep. Know? Very powerful. You know, just you, do it. Just do it. You know, if you burn, you burn. But, you know, yeah. you're going to rise from the ashes. It's funny you say that because on, on one of my vision boards, I have a phoenix. So there's a baby phoenix next to an adult phoenix. Mm-hmm. And it's just a, a cycle. Constant death and life. Ought we to fear the burn then? Absolutely not. Why? There is no reason. I, I, okay, so, okay, so I think this experience that we call life is a series of many deaths until we actually experience a complete absence of life. The person I was when I was five years old is completely dead to the world. Like, parts of him, he's still part of me. But I couldn't tell you what he was doing, why he was doing the things he was doing. I can tell you who I'm doing now. And I wouldn't be the person that I am now if I was still that five-year-old person. Like, every single day, a little piece of us dies and a little piece of us is born. And it's this cycle. I think it's super wise with, with the phoenix. It's, it's a beautiful representation, especially because of how long they're, well their lifespan is (laughs) but in the grand scheme of things if you just alter the perspective and you look at it at a microscopic level things are always changing things are always dying and new is always being born you are always being born again yeah you have the you you get you have the choice every single day to decide what am i going to do today who am i going to be all the more reason for me and everybody else to start writing down who we want to be every day. Um, I definitely, I've been wanting to, it's so hard for me to keep journaling, but. It's, it's tough, man. I, even I struggle with it some days. Today, today I didn't want to wake up early. Like I woke up early, it's like, shit, if I don't wake up early, I'm not going to make the interview and I'm, well, I'm going to make the interview, but I'm not going to write my journal. And if I don't write my journal before, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to write it after. But by then, I looked at my phone. I spoke to other people. I have other things in my head. So it's just like a, a thing you do. The mm-hmm. discipline comes, and then that affects the rest of your life. Like, it, it seeps into the rest of whatever you do. I love it, man. It's very motivational. We, you have a hard out at 10. So, oh, shoot. So let's, uh, it's, I'm loving chatting with you, but uh, we... We, uh, I would really like to hear your, your, your new song. So, so it's called, I got you. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Tell me a little bit about this track. Yeah. So, so, so I want people to know that like, I do talk about different kinds of things, but this is one of the first songs that I wrote through this, uh, this experience that I was telling you about, like transitioning from motivational speaking to, to rap and yeah, second song I wrote, this one's called I Got You. And the, the the story behind it itself was like coming to terms with actually loving yourself as an individual um, because 
you have to start there. If you can't love your yourself as an individual, you can't exude love to others properly, at least. Mm. I love that. We come full, come full circle. Yeah, yeah, it worked out. <laughs> All right, we've got Big Lou performing his unreleased track, I Got You. Yes, yes, Jelly, thank you so much for the intro. Cause I got you, I will never stop to Take a break and tit in on my name It takes a lot to get up to the top to See the view, it requires lots of pain, yeah Cause I got you, I will never stop to Take a break and tit in on my name It takes a lot to get up to the top to See the view, it requires lots of pain Well, I wanna start with thank you I used to be so lost, my mind went from blank to Bursting from the rim, quickly forced to learn to swim Hanging by a limb, the greatest struggle is within Hold on, don't go, don't jump though What you mean, how we're living is a dump though Yep, I've been all up in a slump, yo When I was getting pretty drunk, bro Wow, wow, that feels so long ago now It's been a rocky road, but now I am so proud I still trip on traps, so I take a step back Recalculate my plan and proceed by using maps <laughs> Now I move through my life with some direction All I do with my life is build projections Not an architect, but these are my etchings Nor am I Yano, but here I am flexing Yeah, I'm talking to you I wouldn't know what to do if it wasn't for you, man. Wow. All you need is a plan. Ain't no way about it. It's that simple. Understand? Yeah. We all got but one choice. Liberate yourself. Choose freedom. Use your voice. Wow. Take a look at me now. I'm kicking it on stage. I'm kicking it how? Thank you so <sighs> much, Lou. I, I'm very excited for this track to come out. That was Ah, uh, thank you. you. That was awesome. I got you. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for coming in, buddy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for having me. All right, peace. Woo! It takes a lot to get up to the top. I get up to the top. I get up to the top.